Good afternoon and welcome everyone to another episode of our monthly series called Career Jumpstart. And I'm here today, my name is Ray Jackson. I have my esteemed colleague, Kelly Nottingham with me. What's going on, Kelly, how are you? I'm doing well today, Ray, how are you? Doing pretty good. And so I guess in commemoration of us starting the month of December, um, the thought for me was, hey, we should we should talk about gifts, but not in the traditional sense of exchanging gifts with people during Christmas time. But I really wanted to focus in on gifts as it relates to our talents and the things that we bring to the table each day um, within our careers and um, within our space. Um, so when you think about gifts, though, so the title is called Gifted, Pursuing Your Passion Amid a Pandemic. And so you know, you can kind of make the transition or at least make the um, the leap in your thinking process saying, OK, gifts, I get it, talents. All right. But the question is, how many of us are actually using our gifts in a way that um, enables us to, you know, get energized or excited about what we're doing? You know, how many of us are actually fulfilling our purpose? And then also how many of us are actually even using our gifts to begin with? So how many of us are really passionate about what we do? And so that's what we're going to take a deep dive in as far as looking at this afternoon. And um, Kelly, I know you and I have have some stories to share later on with folks. We also have um, what we're recommending for folks to kind of consider and think about as they um, kind of look at their situation. You know, one thing that this whole pandemic has, I guess, put on all of us is, you know, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? You know, it, my situation may not be the best anymore, or, you know, this may have happened or things are so uncertain. So it's just like, I get it. This is what's happening, but am I happy? You know, am I pursuing what I desire to do? And you think about all the different types of businesses that have sh shut their doors. You know, mm -hmm. you think about all the different services that are out there or that have been out there that are no longer providing services. You know, and I, Kelly, the thing, the, I guess the big thought that I've always had was um, all these things that we've grown accustomed to over the years, are they really worth it? You know, or, or is it like a frivolous type of business or a frivolous type yeah. of service? And in all honesty, you know, the folks that I, you know, my, my family members, when I get on this topic, I'm like, you know what, whatever that service or product was, it really didn't matter in the bigger scheme of things. And so, you know, having thoughts like that, just mm -hmm. kind of, at least for me, it makes me think, was this stuff really worth it? And then you start thinking about, okay, so what I'm doing from day to day or what I've done in my career, is it, is it really, you know, energizing me? Is it exciting me? You know, so what yeah. are your thoughts on that really quickly, Kelly, before we move forward? Uh, yeah, I, I think you bring up some really good points, Ray. I, you know, I, I've seen some memes going around saying right. uh, kind of jokingly, but not jokingly. Uh, that hindsight is twenty twenty, as we always say, you know, and this year has been really a year that a lot of us have have basically had to stop in our tracks and reprioritize. I think for a lot of us, uh, it's been a year of uh, taking off the blinders that we get on so much in our daily lives, um, you know, making a, a living and working in just day to day, day to day, day to day. And when things sort of crumble apart um, and we're forced to, to really pull back and give that, that bigger view of, I don't know what's happening. I'm feeling very unsettled. My, my normal structures have fallen apart. Uh, what do I have left? And it does cause us to really take some, some deep breaths hopefully, sure. and look at the past and say, you know, because I know, Ray, you and I have been laid off before. Yeah. We've talked about our layoff situations before. Uh, you know, one of the things that I have found so interesting about when I've gotten laid off and once I get through the kind of grieving and anger and frustration process of that, yeah, is looking back and going, I didn't really like that job. <laughs> I, I didn't even really enjoy it. And, and so for a lot of us, I think, this has been an interesting year of what I've been calling navel gazing, where we're, we're sort of taking a little time to process. We've all been stuck in our houses, um, thinking through, you know, what did we like and not like about what we've been doing? What did we like and not like about our lives? Um, yeah. Being away from our families a whole lot at a job that when all is said and done and 
we're like, what have I been wasting my life doing? Uh, and I think for a lot of people too, going back to the idea of gifts, I think this has been in an interesting way, its own sort of, this is awful to say, like a silver, a tiny silver lining on this whole, on this whole situation for okay. this whole year with everything going on is that it has caused us, a lot of us to take the time to really reflect and think about what, what do we value? And what actually are our gifts? Because I think this is another thing, and we're going to be talking about this in the session today. But I think one of the biggest challenges for us is as we get into our careers, as we just kind of follow the path that's being laid out for us in our careers, a lot of times we're told by others what our gifts are. Yep. Like, oh, you're so good at organizing things. or You're so good at doing this. But yeah, we may be able to do it, but do we actually like doing it? Is it, is it really what makes us want to get up in the morning and, and do our thing during the day? And what even is our thing? Uh, what is our gift? And so for a lot of folks, especially as I look at people's resumes, oh dear, uh, we find out what people really think their gifts are and things that they don't even realize are gifts that they have. So uh, what we're going to be talking about a lot today uh, are some of those things. Um, and how we can really kind of pull back that view of getting into the everyday, pulling that back and saying, you know, what are the themes of what are my, what are my gifts? What Absolutely. talents do I have? What skills do I have? And what do I really like? So. That's so true. Thank you so much, Kelly, for sharing that. So for those folks that are just now joining us, please comment and, and let us know what you believe your gifts are. We, mm -hmm. I would love to find that out. And if you don't know what your gifts are, do you happen to know maybe what some of your interests might be? Mm -hmm. Okay, that'll be something um, for, for you to consider, but we would love to see your comments in regards to that. And thank you, Trenise Matthews for joining us. I uh, appreciate you joining us. And um, so Kelly, so yes. what I wanna do really quickly, I, I wanna share a, a video clip that I recently ran um, underneath uh, both of my profiles on Facebook as well as on LinkedIn of our former leader um, that, uh, she actually hired a, you and I into our mm -hmm. last employer. Um, I'm going to feature uh, Bridget Brooks really quickly, a little quick 30 second snippet of something that she said in, in that video. And it just really resonated with me. And I think it ties in nicely to um, our topic uh, this afternoon. So let me go ahead and play that. And then Kelly will talk about it. All right. Great. Begin with the end in mind. And what I mean by that, when I think about when I'm coaching people, it is about think about what your North Star is for your career. And as opportunities come your way, all opportunities don't get you to the path. Focus directly on those experiences that are going to evolve your capability and skills to get you to the North Star. All right. So, like I said, it was a quick uh, snippet of the video that I recently ran of Bridget. So Kelly, really quickly, I'll ask you and then I'll share my thoughts, but what was your, your reaction um, to that video in the context of what we're discussing this afternoon? Um, and I'm sorry, I put you on the spot like no, that. No, 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 no. I'm actually, I'm, I'm trying to narrow it down because Bridget always has such awesomeness to share with Absolutely. everybody. I would say the thing that, that popped into my head as she was talking was saying no to the things that don't serve you. And that's a tough lesson. Yeah. Saying no to the things that don't build your your career the way you want it to go. Yeah. And so and, and that is so critical. So you think about it. Current context. You know, all of us are going through the pandemic. There's a lot of uncertainty in, in um, the workplace. You know, you also think about um, folks like myself. You know, I was laid off earlier this calendar year. And um, so you think about all that negativity, okay, or potential negativity. And so in all honesty, and I'll just kind of revert back to my personal experience earlier this year. So when I was laid off, Kelly, and I think I've shared this with you, and this might sound so <laughs> ridiculous, depending on how you look at it, but I was so happy. And the reason why I say that is that, you know, prior to me being laid off, I would say probably like, Last summer, I finally figured out what my passion was, mm -hmm. okay? And that spark, that excitement, it just like, I couldn't contain it. Yeah. And so you find out what your passion is, 
And then, you know, you go to work and you may or may not be working in your passion. At that time, I would say I was in alignment with my passion, but I wasn't really doing exactly what I um, desired to do, at, at least at that time, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, so then it's just like, you get to the point where you just like, you start feeling uncomfortable, meaning that you're not excited about things that you may have used to be excited about because you've discovered like this thing that mm-hmm. just energizes you. And you feel like anytime you're apart or away from that, as far as performing that and doing those, that thing, it's just like, you feel like, man, why am I wasting all this time doing this other stuff, fulfilling other people's dreams? But to Bridget's point, why why am I not pursuing my North Star? Why am I not pursuing that purpose that I was designed to pursue? Okay, so now fast forward to right now, you think about what everybody's going through. And you think, like I say, you think about those negative situations. In all honesty, Kelly, the way I look at the world, it's like, if you're pursuing your passion or your purpose, even in in those negative times, those negative circumstances, in all honesty, it seems like when you know that you're that you're um, doing something that has like a bigger purpose than what you're going through at that moment, it enables you to actually successfully navigate through those negative circumstances. You know, like I said, you know, I was laid off, but mm-hmm. in the what six months or whatever it is that I've been laid off. And now I've actually started my own business, which what I do is actually in alignment with what I'm passionate about. It hasn't been easy, but like I said, even during those difficult days, I was getting up, what, 4.30 in the morning, getting my day started, doing, you know, working to like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. It's because I'm passionate about this Mm -hmm. stuff. You know, Mm -hmm. it excites me. And then when I get messages from folks, like direct messages from people or I'm on the phone call with folks and, um, and, you know, and just hearing them just pour their heart out. Hey, Ray, this is what I'm experiencing. Can you help me out? And just listening to them. And I'm like, this is what I was designed to do, you know, and that's what gets me up in the morning. That's what excites me. Even those days in which, you know, I'm feeling like insecure and I'm like, I don't know how long this is going to last. You know, I don't know how long I will be able to to do this because, you know, I got to do X, Y, and Z. I got to pay these bills or I got to do whatever. But then I'm reminded of, you know, when I see those messages and these people are reaching out to me, I'm like, in these past six months, I've probably um, touched more people on an individual basis than I've done in the past, what, decade, you know, doing something as far as fulfilling somebody else's passion and dream. Yeah. Does that make sense what I'm saying? And, and not just, yeah, not yeah just it absolutely does. Things. Because all those things align to what I'm doing right yeah. now. It's prepared, prepared yeah. me, but it's just a whole nother level of mm-hmm. personal engagement with your, you know, with what you're doing. Does that make sense? It, it does. I, it, to me, it's the difference between, um, you know, going like going on vacation where you want to go and going on vacation where somebody else tells you that they want you to go. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I'll go there and, and I'm sure it'll be okay and it'll be fine. And I still get a vacation out of it, but I really would prefer to go over here. Um, you know, it's, it's also interesting. And I know we're, we're going to be talking about this throughout uh, as a thread throughout the session today. But one of the things that I have found also is that, when you identify those things that are so important to you that do make you want to get up in the morning, um, it can still be in the context of a job for someone else. Um, But it's doing it. And and this goes back to what Bridget was saying, doing it mindfully to move yourself in the direction that you want to go. And people that have worked with me have heard me say this. I know you've heard me say this, right? Um, It's, it's about being, a mercenary for yourself. And when I say that, I'm not talking about like, I'm talking, I'm a history nerd. So I'm thinking like medieval mercenaries, right. Um, Who would develop a skill and like, say they, they developed a skill with a bow and arrow and they were, they were okay at it. They would go find someone who would pay them to shoot a bow and arrow and they would work for that king or that lord or that lady or whatever um, for as long as that relationship was beneficial and they were working on their skills. And once it was time for them to move on for whatever reason, the battle was fought or whatever, 
they would take all the skills that they developed working for that person okay. and they would go work for another person and they would charge more and they had more prestige because they had built their skills up and maybe now they were really an expert in a longbow and a crossbow yeah whatever wow but i think this is one of those things that it was a it was a brain switch for me when i finally this idea popped into my head years ago that the idea of loyalty to a company is is kind of non-existent anymore sure um you can be loyal to a company and you can do what you need to do you can be a good soldier or whatever for that company you good mercenary for that company while you're working for them but at the same time you need to be conscious of the fact that you are building a portfolio of skills that you are going to be able to take with you anywhere you go and your passion and your gifts are things that you really need to focus on in that portfolio of skills so that it's not just work that you're able to do, it's work that you actually want to do. Wow. And you can continue to move yourself forward and up and, and into new, whole different spheres of work when you really start to understand the gifts that you have and the value that you bring and you start consciously developing that portfolio of skills around that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of comments and thank y'all so much for commenting. This is great. So Trinice Matthews, once again, kind of listed out what she's actually um, passionate about and what she's doing. She's opened up, I, b I believe, um, I don't know how recently, but she oversees five child care centers. Oh, wow. So, um, she says she left the corporate world and she pursued that. And um, so thank you, Trinice, for sharing that. Um, mm -hmm. Marcella Henderson shared that passion and purpose should be over everything. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you, Marcella. Uh, Tiffany mm -hmm. Taylor joined us as well. Hi, and, Tiffany. And kind of tying back to what you just said about transferable skills, Tiffany yeah. mentioned transferable skills. So that's what you have like in your bag that you can mm -hmm. take anywhere. Mm -hmm. But one thing that you did say at the end that just truly resonated was just because you're able to do something, the other question is, is this something that I really want to do? You know. Obviously, there are a lot of things that a lot of us are capable of doing and we've done it. But you got to ask the question, is it something that I really want to do? And I know a lot of companies tend to focus in on engagement as it relates to their workforce, you know, and they track that stuff on an annual basis. How engaged are our employees? And obviously, the ideal situation for any employer is to have folks that are capable of doing the job, mm -hmm. okay, but they also are desirous as far as their willingness to do that job. Because think about it, if you have someone that's capable of doing the job and you've assigned them this task and they hate doing that job, yeah, they're not gonna, first of all, if they do it, okay, they're not gonna give 100%. And then you get some folks <laughs> that are vindictive, they might try to sabotage because they understand how everything works. So they, they might even try to sabotage whatever it is um, that you have them doing. So the key thing then as, um, you know, as an employee or as some, as a professional is understanding what it is that you're gifted at, or at least what are your capabilities? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the second thing is, what is it that you really want to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. And your effort really should be focused in on how can I match those two things in whatever the situation is, Yeah. whether it's, you know, working for a fortune 500 company or whether it's, you know, teaching, you know, refugees in a foreign country or, is it doing something like Kelly and I are doing right now, you know, holding, holding these live stream events and running our own businesses and things of that nature, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. But the key thing is matching your capability along with your, um, with your passion or at least mm -hmm. whatever it is that you desire to do, matching that up. And it doesn't matter the amount of money, whether you're getting paid millions of dollars or you're being paid nothing, guess what? You wake up every morning with a smile on your face because you are doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing in life. Yeah. And that's really what we're talking about. So yeah. it's kind of ironic, Kelly, because I didn't think this conversation was going would go in this direction, but like we never know. Yeah, we never so know. <laughs> but it's like matching your gifts, which is that yeah. skill, that capability, and matching it really with your heart mm -hmm. and, and kind of finding yourself at that intersection. And yeah. in all honesty, you know, I, I um I check, I'm a part of these uh, groups on LinkedIn and I'm, I'm always scanning through people's questions and I'll respond here and there whenever I can. And a lot of the folks out there are professionals that have degrees in whatever the field mm -hmm. might be. They have years of experience, 
In all honesty, the ones that I've answered to have all said that they, they're looking to switch careers. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, wow, you know, here, when I, when I had that, that part in my life where I actually went from one career to a whole nother career industry and everything else, whole nother skill set. At that point in time, I thought I was the only one, you know, and it's just like, so then you start feeling bad because you're like, am I turning my back on what I've been professionally taught how to do? You think about all the investments that, that we may have made in our college years and things of that nature. And you're mm -hmm. just like, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. I want to do this over here. And then having the guts to do that, even if everybody else is saying, don't do that because you went to college for this over here, you know, or you can't make a whole lot of money over there. Or how are you going to survive? But at the end of the day, you know, we don't have to answer to any of those people, <laughs> you know, and it's just like at the end of the day, we have to live with our decisions. And really, the whole point is, are we comfortable with whatever that decision might be? And even if you're not where you want to be yet, as far as your um, your passion, but like Bridget alluded to in that video, if you're along going along that pathway and you know what that North Star is, you know what your end point is. That's what motivates you to continue along that pathway. So whether or not there are opportunities where you are right now, as far as where you work, whether it's there or not, if you know what your North Star is or if you know what your end point is, you just kind of follow the pathway and you say, OK, this is where I am right now. This is not where I want to stay. But that next jump or at least that next step is going to be right over there. That should be the conversation that we're having with ourselves yeah. You know, as we um, uh, make our way along that pathway. So what are the comments before we actually move into some recommendations that we share with folks, uh, Kelly? Any comments or recommendations? before? We uh, the, only, the only thing that I just want to reiterate uh, is that we own this. Yes. Nobody else owns this for us. And um, I think that's one of those really empowering things about this, uh, okay. especially if you're in a position, those of you who right now are maybe hanging on to a job and clinging like, ah, I can't let go of this job because I need it. And because the job market is not great right now, um, that even in those situations, there are still opportunities to look for the pieces of that, that bring you some joy and that feel like, this is what I'm moving toward. This is what I'm passionate about. And it doesn't have to be like a 15, 20 year plan. Y'all, I, I personally am not a planner. Ray is the planner. Um, I am not the, I just did like a, it was like the Brady Bunch or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, right. I am not the planner of the two of us. And so, you know, for me, it's really scary to think about like a 10 year plan, but I know that for me, my North star, and we'll talk about this in just a few minutes, what, what my North stars are. If I keep those in line, I can transition through industries. I can transition through different types of roles. I can do lots of different things because I'm not focused on, I am a data analyst who does blankety blankety blank. Yeah. I'm focused on those bigger gifts and passions that I have that transcend industry, transcend job role. Um, and that, that can be really liberating yeah. both in in the long term but also in the context of if you're stuck right now in a job that maybe you're not overly thrilled about uh, or you're kind of feeling lost right now uh, you don't have to have 50 years worth of answers you don't have to you can decide for yourself like right now what what is is important to you what is your passion about right now because our passions can also i think they don't necessarily go away but they mutate throughout our lives yeah. so you don't have to have all the answers. Relax, those of you who are stressed out right now. It's fine. <laughs> so, and I appreciate that, that uh, <laughs> comment, Kelly. So um, right before we get into the three ways, and I know for some folks, this is the reason why you came to talk about these three ways. But before we get into that, you said something that really um, uh, reminded me of a situation that I was in several years ago. So my very first job promotion, and this is so crazy, as it was happening, I was like, not, I could not have scripted this any better. Okay. So, you know, I, I was working as a training specialist and um, what this project came along. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it was a team that our department was helping in trying to, um, I guess you can say, automate their training. And by that, what I mean is like they were actually physically teaching their class 
on a weekly basis or what have you. But as training goes for a lot of people that this is not their thing, they're like, man, it'd be great if we can just figure out a way that somebody else can do it or maybe we can put it on the computer <laughs> for people to, to, to view it later. So I don't have to do this. I want to go do something else. OK, so that was the situation that we were trying to help this this department with. People didn't want to do the training. At least the people didn't want to teach the training. So see, that wasn't their passion. It wasn't. Yeah, absolutely. So what we did, though, is that we partnered with them and I ended up, I think, creating like it was like 20. I know the number because I have it on my resume. <laughs> so it was like 27 videos, training videos that I uh, did with them. And so that way they had like a whole library of um, training videos for new hires and things of that nature. And so the crazy thing though, Kelly, this is the whole point. So I was very passionate about video, you know, taking videos and doing the editing. That was just like, that was my hobby back in the day. I used to love taking videos and editing and just making it, you know, videos just randomly. And this is before YouTube, this is before all of this stuff. OK, so when the opportunity as far as me having that as a hobby. So when the opportunity came for our team that I was on um, to do this project, I was like in a million years, I would have never guessed I would put my video uh, taking and video editing skills to work at work. And it was just like those two things became married, basically. So mm -hmm. once that happened, like the project, I knocked it out of the park and it was just like, like that. And I got a promotion. I got my very first promotion out of that experience. And it changed the whole dynamics as it relates to how I started looking at the workforce and how, how I started looking at myself, you know, and what I bring to the table, because I used to be underneath like this mindset that, you know, they hired me to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So I'm going to leave what ABC in the car and I'm only going to bring X, Y, Z into the building. Mm -hmm. And then once I had that experience that I just mentioned, I realized I can bring my complete self into the workplace, meaning that not only have they hired me, but also those things that I'm passionate about, those things that I do on the outside of work. And now I have a situation where I've been able to kind of integrate both of them together. That's when I realized, why isn't everybody doing this? You know, mm -hmm. not to say that there aren't people that do this because there are, but not everybody's doing that. You know, and so that's personally, that's when that seed was planted in my head that you can get paid to do your job. But guess what? You can bring in your gifts and talents into the workplace, whatever they might be, and then try to figure out how can you um, leverage that in a way that enables you to not only meet their expectations, but also what bring fulfillment and happiness to, to your, you know, your experience at that time. So I am completely sold on people pursuing their passion. I know it's something that I always talk about, especially when I'm posting videos and stuff on, on, on social media. There's always some element of passion in there yeah. as far as, hey, you should be pursuing your passion because it, I believe in it, you know? Yeah. And so with that being said, so we're going to talk about three ways to identify mm -hmm. your career passion. So I know a couple of folks have already indicated what they're currently doing and what they're passionate about. But those folks that haven't commented or those folks that will catch the replay, um, please go ahead and um, list that out in the chat. If you know what your what your passions are and maybe kind of give us a quick a quick um, heads up of what that is. And if you don't know what your passion is, let us know in the comments as well. But if you don't know or if you kind of know, but you're not necessarily working in that space right now, here are three ways to identify your career passion. And Kelly, you and I will break this down as we go. So the first thing I have listed on, I'm looking off to the side because that's where my notes are. But um, the first thing is reach back into your childhood. So if you're looking to figure out, hey, what is it that I'm passionate about? And there was a time that I was like this mm -hmm. in my adulthood, you know, that I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. But one of the first things that folks recommend is... Um, Think back towards your childhood. What was it that you um, did back then that you or said to yourself that, hey, when I get older, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. What was that? That might be a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Kelly, what, what are your thoughts on that as far as reaching back to your childhood? to identify? Yeah, I, I actually love to find out what people's favorite childhood TV shows were. Oh, wow. Uh, because it's uh, I I think a lot of times we fall into these these patterns of what interests our brains at a really, really young age. And okay. so 
when I was a kid, I mean, I think about the stuff that I used to read and the shows that I used to watch on TV and they were, you know, Scooby-Doo. I used to read Encyclopedia Brown. Do you remember Encyclopedia Brown? Oh, yeah. I read um, <laughs> Yes. And, uh, you know, books uh, like Nancy Drew, The Hardy Boys. I loved mysteries. I loved solving problems. Um, I loved kind of digging into things. And as I get older, I mean, it's funny. I still love shows like Forensic Files. I love Agatha Christie novels. I love the psychology of why people do things. Okay. And um, so I, I think it's always kind of fun to see, you know, the, the, the dreams that people have when they were little and the TV shows or the books they used to read when they were young that sometimes you don't necessarily think of as being relevant to anything in your life. Yeah. Um, when I was a, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a ballerina and I wanted to be a long haul truck driver <laughs> and um, I want to be a skating waitress. I, <laughs> that one is difficult to do nowadays unless you're like working at Sonic, I guess. Yep. But what's <laughs> funny is as an adult now, I actually teach dance. I'm not a ballet dancer anymore, um, okay. but I do teach dance and I still, I have that passion for, for dance. Um, and the, 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 the long haul trucking thing, this is really kind of random. Um, I love to travel. I love to take road trips. I so I will get in my car, pack some snacks and just drive. And Ray, you've seen this at work whenever we had opportunities, you know, in our previous work where they were like, does anybody want to go to Detroit in February? And I'm like, oh, me, 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 so me. I love to travel. I want to go. I want to go. And so, you know, hey, Detroit, if you're out there, <laughs> um, you know, that. But that passion for seeing new places and for trying new things was there. Yeah. It has always been there. And so I think, you know, it, it's identifying those little threads that 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 go through your childhood, uh, things that you maybe enjoyed doing or playing games you like to play that can really start to tease out some of this that maybe we don't necessarily give any credence to. So Absolutely. kind of fun. Well, thank you for sharing that. So Marcella Henderson shared in the comments, she says, I love inspiring others and I love beauty, hair, nails, makeup, also health. It's awesome, mm -hmm. Marcella. So my question, and I, you could either comment or I can talk to you on social media afterwards, but my question to you, Marcella, are you doing those things right now as far as um, what you've listed? I, I'm just curious, not to put you on the spot or anything like that. Um, so Kelly, really quickly, um, as you were sharing, I know we got to move on to the next point, but really quickly. So when I thought back towards my childhood, the TV shows probably didn't re really reflect what I wanted to do um, as a kid. But there were a couple of things that do stand out. You're going to you're going to laugh at probably at least at least one of them. OK, so I remember as a kid. So, you know, the junk mail, you know, that we get in the, in the regular mail. So as a kid, I actually used to collect all the junk mail <laughs> And then I think we had like a suitcase or what have you in the house, like a little small suitcase. And I used to lay out all the junk mail on the uh, on the floor. And then I would like, I don't know how I would categorize it, but I would separate it out. So this junk mail represented something over here. This pile represented something else and so on and so forth. So I have it all organized and separated out. And then I'll put it all together in that order. And then I put it in a suitcase and then I pretended like I was going to work. So I, I was imagining that I was a businessman and I remember that so clearly. My parents used to get so angry at me. They're like, why you got all this junk on the floor? And I'm like, I'm a businessman, <laughs> you know? And so that that's adorable. Me. Huh? That's adorable. <laughs> I don't know. It's embarrassing. I don't know why it's It's that. adorable. Oh, You're an organizer, Ray. You are a natural organizer. I guess so. I, well, mm -hmm. thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that. Maybe I should start my own show about organizing, right? <laughs> so that was one thing. And then another thing, um, this was like later on. So this was like my early teens. I became really passionate about music. So my mom um, has always played the piano. And I remember as a kid, um, she used to play the piano. And I, we had a piano in our house. And I would get my blanket and get my pillow. And I would lay down on the floor right next to the piano as she was playing. And I would just fall asleep, knocked out. And so um, that was like a routine for me because I just loved music. Didn't realize it then, but then as a teenager, I started, um, I got my first keyboard and I started um, creating music and then I actually um, started performing music. I know this is gonna be a story that I share later on. So anyway, that seed was planted as a kid. 
and um, don't know how it bears any um, <laughs> bears on my life right now. As far as I'm not doing any music right now, but music is such a huge part of my life. You know, I always have to have a soundtrack to everything. That's probably why we had a soundtrack at the kickoff of this program today. But you know, it's a huge thing. So the key thing that we're trying to say is reach back towards your childhood and try to figure out if you don't know your passion, um, you might be able to pick up on some themes. If not, maybe you pick up, hey, that's what I used to dream about. You know what? Life is short. I'm going to go ahead and start doing that right now. You know, whatever it is. So tap into that. OK, so the second thing is um, list out activities you love doing the most. And so you think about and I know I've um, shared this point multiple times during our time together this afternoon is like, what is it that energizes you? What is it that you do that um, puts a smile on your face and you feel like, you know, what, I can do this all. I can literally do this all day long. OK, and that's what we're referring to when we say list out those activities you love doing the most. And even though you may not land on any one of those, but at least it gives you a starting point. And it also it kind of gives you an idea because once again, you, you should be able to pick up on those themes of those things that you love to do. OK, and that could be that starting point to kind of click that thought and say, you know what? I'm going to research this a little bit further. You know, I want to find out as much as I can. Maybe I can meet up with some folks that actually do this for a living and kind of find out what what's, you know, what's involved from their perspective. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's the point for number two. Kelly, what are your thoughts on that? And thank you, Marcella, for commenting. She says, yes, I work in my gifts on a part time basis. That's awesome, mm -hmm. Marcella. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to also see more people working part time. Yes. Um, and, you know, finding, you know, I, one thing that popped out when you were just talking about that um, is the idea of also, you know, you may enjoy the actual work you do day to day, but okay. maybe the industry doesn't match mm -hmm. with what your passions are all about. Um, so, for example, I love I love gardening. Um, I love going out in the woods and hiking. And, and, uh, so for me, I'm, I, I'm passionate about protecting the environment. Okay. And so, you know, it actually has affected when I go to look for work, uh, the industries that I'm willing to work in and the industries I'm frankly, just not willing to work in depending on, you know, does this, does this match what my passion is? Uh, and that can also help as you start to think and people start to kind of broaden out their ideas with those transferable job skills, there may be industries that you have never considered before uh, that may actually tie in with a passion that you have um, that, you know, is an activity that you enjoy doing. Obviously, if it's that something that you enjoy doing, there's something about that that pulls you. So what is it about that that really pulls you in? And is there a way that you can maybe look perhaps in a different industry than you thought about before, or a different role that you thought about before that you that you really enjoy doing. Absolutely. So, yeah. Appreciate that one. So, Kelly, this last one, it just blew my mind. And this is the one that really resonates with me out of the three that, that we're listing. So this last one says, list what you would do if your success were guaranteed. So list out what you would do if your success were guaranteed. And I don't think I've ever looked at that type of decision from that perspective. So if my success was guaranteed, hands down, I would do what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I love what I'm doing right now. And if my success was guaranteed, absolutely guaranteed, I would be doing this. And so the question is now, okay, so how can I get this to the point where it's self-sustaining, where, where money is no issue or success is no issue? That would be tremendous. And I think for me personally, that's the thing that's missing for me right now. I don't haven't been able to completely figure it out and I may never figure it out. Or it might be as I go along that pathway, you know, things are revealed to me as I you know start making that movement. But um, that question, I don't think I've ever heard that. Wouldn't that be an awesome interview question? <laughs> it's like if your success was guaranteed in at this company. What oh, that's you, an important part. Yeah. <laughs> What do you envision yourself doing? <laughs> yeah, be like, I wouldn't be working. Um, yeah, and I, I think that it's a great question. And I think for for 
for me, when you brought this question up, okay, uh, one thing that it made me think about is how I actually define success. Interesting. Okay. And yeah. am I cool. defining the success or am I looking to other people to define success? Uh, because, you know, if success were guaranteed, doesn't necessarily mean that you and I are going to be the next, I don't know, Tony Robbins or whatever. Sure. Oprah, whatever. <laughs> um, it could be, you know, I'm able to live and pay all my bills comfortably. I'm able to travel and go visit my family a couple times a year and take a vacation. Um, I don't have to work 80, 90 hours a week to be successful. That may not be the same for other people. Other people like, I want the Maserati. Yeah. I want the big humongous house and I want a maid to clean it. You know what I mean? So cool. I think, um, you know, as people are asking that question of themselves, you know, uh, what if your success were guaranteed is what is your success what guaranteed. what if your success was guaranteed and what does that mean for you because that may actually lower a bar that you didn't even realize an expectation that you had in your head of what success even means and maybe when you ask yourself that you're like wow this is maybe more achievable yep. than i even realized that it was so yeah that popped out when you asked that, that that is so true and thank you for for pointing that out because you know and i know i i've before, you know, uh, on, on these live streams, I've featured my sister and my brother-in-law before mm -hmm. and how they live internationally. And, and I think I may have mentioned it during those um, live streams. But once I gained exposure to international living, it completely changed the way I look at everything, at, mm -hmm. at success, at what I was doing and things of that nature. So kind of going back to what you just mentioned about, you know, changing the bar or at least defining what success meant, means to you. Once I realized the cost of living was a way, uh, it was way more cheaper than here in the U.S. And you're not necessarily sacrificing, you know, um, you are sacrificing certain things, but those things that that matter to me, I was actually not sacrificing anything. And right. actually, in some cases, <laughs> I might be upgrading a few things simply because my dollar goes a whole lot further. Yeah. And so, but. Point the point that I'm making is that once I gained that exposure, it completely changed how I defined success. So when I think about what I'm currently doing and then what I desire to do, the bar is a whole lot lower than what I used to think, what, about mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. You know, yeah. I'm thinking that I have to be a gazillionaire in order to eventually re retire, let alone thinking about, you know, living internationally. Mm -hmm. And now that we've gone that we've gone through the pandemic and I see that, you know, I'm, I'm working from home, you're working from home and seeing how dramatically my expenses have been reduced. I'm just like, whoa, it, it was actually costing me more money <laughs> to leave the house every day right? Than to stay home, you know, get out whenever I have to or whenever I desire to. But not necessarily every single day You're paying tolls, you're paying yeah. gas, you're paying maintenance on your car. Once I pretty much eliminated all that from from the equation, I was just like, wow, I'm saving hundreds of dollars yeah. per month. And so you just yeah. think about it. Does it really, is success really what I used to think or is it something totally different? So that is critical. And I thank you yeah. so much for bringing that piece up. And yeah, so we've downsized. We've downsized yeah. dramatically uh, in the past year from our move from living in the city in okay. Houston. Yep. Um, we've downsized homes into a much smaller home, but out in the country on 11 acres of forest. And uh, yeah, we had to get rid of some stuff, but it's like, how many spatulas does one person actually <laughs> need or two people? Like, why do we have 17 spatulas? <laughs> well, we don't need 17 spatulas. Uh, I don't even need to work about worry about a, you know, a, a work pants budget anymore, right? right? Yeah. We still have to worry about the work shirts, yeah. but not the work pants. That's so, so you know, it, I about that. you know, we can get rid of we can get rid of stuff. And yeah, I think absolutely. that's one of these pieces that when when we're we're constantly thinking about keeping up with other people or keeping up with the expectations we have of what success means, we're less likely to look at what we're passionate about. And we're cool. we're more likely to just sort of push that down and say that's not as important as achieving, achieving, achieving. And yes, it is a very American mentality, especially. 
wow. um, to think that way and to subsume what we want for what we think we're supposed to have instead of really looking at what we value and what we want. Wow. And it, 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 it's a whole, I mean, it's like, it's like taking off one pair of glasses that don't work and putting on a pair of glasses that do. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> everything looks different. Everything looks different. So I'm thinking, Kelly, that might have to be a future topic of ours. Um, okay. That's something that I know you and I are both passionate about. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, thanks for, for commenting on that. And so we have about 15 more minutes left. So we're going to start to um, wind down. So this last piece that Kelly and I are really looking forward to sharing with y'all, it's dealing with fulfillment or funding. Okay. Mm -hmm. So once again, today's topic was all about pursuing your passion. All right. And so in preparing for this, Kelly and I had a discussion. So does that mean you can only pursue your passion? I mean, does that mean that you're, you can only work in an area that you're passionate about? Or can you be working in something, working at something that you may not necessarily be passionate about, but it might be funding your, um, your passion outside of that particular space? So it's really two things that we're looking at. Let me try to reiterate because I don't think I made sense to myself. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> on one hand, you are actually working within your passion, okay? On the other hand, you're actually working at whatever the job might be, and it's something that you don't necessarily find passion behind or within, but it's funding. The money that you earn from doing that job is funding your passion, which is outside of that particular job. Does that make sense? Yes. And so with that being said, Kelly's actually going to share um, an experience of hers in which she was actually working within her passion. And then I'm going to share an experience in, in which I was working at a job that was funding my passion. Okay. And so Kelly, you go ahead and take it first and then I'll round it out. All right. Uh, and I just wanted to mention, you know, as we were, we were prepping and talking about this topic, uh, this came up in part of our conversation because Ray and I are so passionate about what we do. And, uh, you know, and I said, it's kind of interesting that there, there are people in the world that can do a job and not feel passionate about it, but they're fine with it. And I'm actually married to one of these people. <laughs> uh, he's like, I don't care what I need to do. If they're giving me a paycheck, I'm fine. Um, and I was like, how does that work? Because my brain and my psyche just doesn't work that way. So you may find yourself in one of these two camps as we go through this. So uh, the example I wanted to share. Um, I'm going to put on my glasses for just a second. So you okay. can, okay. You see, this is why we don't wear glasses on camera. Um, when you may not know this because I, I normally wear contacts in these videos, but I am extremely nearsighted. And uh, now I get to wear readers too, which is great. Uh, but uh, I have been very nearsighted for the vast majority of my life. And as a child, um, Everybody thought it was super cute. We would go to my grandma's house every Sunday after church and I would pull out her big, huge Bible and sit down on the floor and read her Bible. And everybody thought this was just adorable because I was only like seven at the time. And uh, it took a while for uh, my mom uh, to realize because I was so young, I didn't know how to explain this. The reason I liked her Bible is because it was large print. And I could actually see the words in it. Um, so when my mom finally, you know, she she it finally registered, like maybe something isn't right. Like we just thought she always sat on the front row because she was I'm, I'm a nerd. Right. So I always sit on the front row in school. Um, she took me to an eye doctor, get my eyes checked and uh, they gave me glasses. And I remember and my poor mother, mom, if you're watching this, it please forgive yourself for this because none of us knew. Uh, when I walked outside after putting these little glasses on for the first time, and they had little Smurfs on the sides because I was super cool and it was the 80s. Um, I turned to my mom and I said, oh, my gosh, look, there are leaves on those trees. And she felt horrible, horrible that she did not know. So oh. as a teenager and as my eyes continued to get worse, uh, I had an eye doctor actually tell me that there was a possibility as I get older that my eyes will not be correctable, that they will get so bad I won't be able to actually correct my vision anymore. And um, hopefully as technology improves, that won't be an issue. So I've always had this horrendous fear of not being able to see. I love to read. I love to craft. I like to knit and sew and quilt and, and make art. 
Um, and I've been terrified my whole life of going blind. So fast forward into uh, my postgraduate school, uh, first real professional job, which I've talked about before on here. I was working at the Georgia Eye Bank and it's a nonprofit that provided corneal tissue and uh, scleral tissue, which is the white of the eyes, uh, to surgeons who needed it to help people who had uh, eye injuries and eye issues, vision issues. And at the time, I was just like, I need a job. I need a job and I will take whatever job I can get. And I think I might be able to do this one. As I got into that job, um, and it ended up uh, not being an ideal work situation, um, but I really found a passion in that job. And I, I guess it, it, it resonated with me, the okay. passion that I had for helping people who could not see to be able to see. Wow. And it really pushed me forward in my work um, that, uh, you know, that fear that I had had for myself and the experience that I'd had for myself um, of not being able to really see well and um, really resonated with me that I could help other people by doing my piece of the work that I did for that organization. Uh, and it also brought forth the opportunity to explore another passion that was latent that I didn't really recognize was a gift that I have, uh, which is teaching people um, because that's essentially what I was doing. I was doing public education and, um, you know, helping the, the public understand how eye donation works, helping hospital staff understand how, how eye donations work. And so it, it kept me moving forward. It kept driving me in that role, um, even when things were not necessarily great in that job, um, to recognize that philanthropy for me is absolutely critical in the work that I do. And teaching people is critical in the work that I do. And so in every job since then, every job, no matter the industry, no matter the job role, I have tried to find that philanthropic thread okay. and the teaching other people thread. Because without those two pieces being present in some form or another, I can't make myself get up and go to work every day. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible Kelly, that's an incredible story. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. So, you know, in your case, then your your passion and really your purpose was all tied into that job at the I Bank. Yeah. And because you saw yourself and those people that were being yeah. positively impacted by the work mm -hmm. that you were performing and also the work that your organization was performing. So yeah. thank you so much for sharing that. So, you know, you think about that example and so basically, no matter what was going on in your life at that time, the fact that you were pursuing your passion on a daily basis, you were able to endure anything because oh, yeah. it was greater than, you know, the, the daily frustrating stuff that, you know, that people encounter on a daily basis. It was way bigger than that. So yeah. that's why it's so critical for folks to be able to understand what their passion is. And for me, my story is really de dealing with the second point is my nine to five in this story, which this happened like back in the 90s. Um, I was actually a social worker. OK, and so. I, I, I wasn't passionate about it. And so 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 my philosophy back then, as it related to social work, I was like, people will always have problems and I can guarantee you I will always have a job as a social worker because social workers will be here until the end of the world, basically. And so, um, but it wasn't my passion. So when I made that decision to pursue social work, I knew it wasn't my passion. My passion, like I said before, was actually music, okay? And so um, I'm sharing that because I got to the point where, you know, I took my whole music thing to a whole nother level. I actually, um, some of you may or may not know this, but I actually used to perform um, Christian hip hop music all right. This is back, like I said, back in the 90s. So it was like taboo, basically, you know, at, at churches, you know, oh, you don't mix, uh, you know, hip hop music in, in, in the church scene. Now it's no big deal. But back then, mm -mm, that wasn't the thing. And then as far as trying to get played, my music played on the regular radio, we had some airplay here and there, but it was a struggle. It's like, oh, you're talking about God. Oh, we can't play your music on our station. So it was just like, OK, so I, I figured out what I want to do. 
but I have no stage. I have nowhere to go and, and to perform, you know, uh, what I love to perform and share my gifts. And so what we ended up doing was myself and my sister, we actually started um, a prison ministry here in the state of Texas within the juvenile detention um, uh, system. So those kids, those teens and those children that are locked up in the state juvenile system because they've committed whatever crimes, we actually decided to um, put on a ministry, we created a ministry. So, and the ministry was really my music and my sister actually, she, um, back then she used to um, write um, like plays. And so we had like a theatrical play that incorporated my music and we, we traveled pretty much the whole state of Texas from, from a, like a halfway house all the way up to like a, a actual prison for children that was like in the thousands and thousands of, of kids that were locked up. And um, we actually got an award and we got recognition for the work that we did. And this spanned for a, between like nine months to like a year's worth of time where we were traveling every single weekend. And so my nine to five was actually funding um, my passion outside of work because I realized that I was impacting more lives outside of work than I was doing as a social worker, which that's my job. And it was just like, I'm like, okay, I can impact hundreds and also thousands of people over here outside of work, or I can, what, impact the nine or 10 people that I have on my caseload. And it was just like, yeah, this is no brainer. I want to do this over here. And so, um, but that job is what, what funded my, um, you know, my outside interests. And so, Yes, I had to work at that time. Yes, my job or no, my job didn't fulfill that passion, but it funded my passion. So the whole point of sharing any of this is that we have to be able to identify what our passion is, because that's what's going to get us up in the morning. So even though I was working at that job that didn't necessarily excite me, but I knew it had its purpose, which was to fund this other thing that I was doing on the outside of work. So I had to show up so that way I can perform my, my task and get paid for it. And then once I got paid for it, guess what? I was out there on the weekends traveling and performing as, as I desired to do. And so, or you might be fortunate enough to be working in the space that you are passionate about and you're making your livelihood that way. So that's an awesome opportunity and an awesome gift that's been provided to you. So in either case, the whole point is that if you don't know what your passion is, you know, we strongly recommend that you consider the things that we've shared this afternoon, as well as, you know, the ways in which you can go about um, identifying what those passions are. And then lastly, you know, feel free to reach out to myself, Ray Jackson, or my colleague, Kelly Nottingham, and we can just discuss this outside of our time together during this live stream. And we can just talk one-on-one -on -one with you. In either case, the whole point is, is that we don't want you to go around here without understanding and knowing what your purpose and passion is. And so, much success. Hopefully what we provided has been worth your time. And I know we're getting right up against the hour. Um, one little announcement um, coming up later on this month, actually on the last day of the calendar year, the last day of 2020, uh, myself and Kelly are hosting a panel discussion on the topic of start, stop and continue. And we're reflecting on the year of 2020. And we want to really set ourselves up for success for 2021. So make sure you mark it on your calendar. We will be advertising about it later on this month. But on New Year's Eve at noon, Central Standard Time, we will be hosting another live event. It'll be Kelly, myself, and two other guests. And we're not going to announce their names just yet, but we will at the end of the month, or at least as we approach that time. So we're going to have a panel discussion. So we're going to see how that goes. Looking forward to it. Have an awesome Christmas. Um, if we don't talk to you outside of this time together, y'all, please be safe. And we'll see you on December 31st. And thank you so much for joining us today. Y'all have an awesome rest of your day. You take care. Bye, everybody.